positive peeps. You're listening to another episode of Staying Positive with Paula, a podcast that welcomes guest speakers and listeners to talk openly about inner positivity and my possibly controversial belief that we all have more optimism than we might think. So the guests I've invited are some of the most amazing individuals I've had the pleasure of meeting. And not only that, they're all individuals I have found to have an overwhelming amount of inner positivity and optimism, which heavily impacts those around them, even if they don't agree. But my hope for this podcast is not only to share more about the speakers with the rest of the world, because I think we would all benefit simply by being around them more, but also to invite each listener to open their minds about themselves and reflect on just how positive they may be. So I hope everyone pauses more throughout the day, pats themselves on the back for simply getting through each day and because that's a huge feat in and of itself. So without further ado, it is my extreme pleasure to announce professional runner, currently working with Under Armour, Sabrina Sutherland to the show. Okay, everyone needs to know (laughs) that we call each other sis. So yes, everyone needs to know that. How are you doing? And now you're with Under Armour, but before, do you want to go through everybody that you ran with and just kind of your- My little overview? Yeah, I'll do that. Georgetown grad, undergrad, of course. Go Georgetown. And then I ran track at Georgetown and then I did my master's in a fifth year at the University of Oregon. And after that, I signed with Nike for four years and then- after that was done, I just recently signed with Under Armour and moved to Baltimore. So that's where I'm at now. And I'm running for Under Armour and training for the Olympic trials that are coming up in June to make the Olympic team. So yeah, that's where I'm at. And Sabrina, you're killing it. And I can see just how much work you're, you've are you been putting in lately. And so we're all wishing you the best of luck for those trials. But Thank okay, you. so first question that I kind of ask a lot of the guests who come on the show is who is the guest to the guest? So you just kind of gave me a little bit of, you know, who you've ran with and kind of your resume, but who is Sabrina Sutherland to Sabrina Sutherland? Hmm. That's a really hard question, actually. We can always kind of circle back, but the former guest that I interviewed, Skylar, she said an interesting thing where she's realized that over the years too, the way that she's answered that question has just been so different. So do you think that the answer that you have today is constantly changing? And do you think that you have changed your perception of who you are since maybe when you were younger? Yeah, definitely. I think that I'm kind of realizing how much I've grown, even in like the past year. I feel myself evolving and growing into the person that like ideally I want to be, but it took a lot of time to get here. And I wouldn't say I'm entirely there yet by any means, but yeah, I'm definitely evolving. I feel like I'm less shy. I think the old me was very shy and I didn't really voice my opinion on a lot of things and I was more neutral and certain situations. But yeah, I feel like I've definitely evolved into a woman who can say how she feels. I feel like I have a different outlook on life. I feel like things are going to be what they're going to be rather than stressing about what they are in the moment. And I love that because you're just kind of talking about exactly what the show is all about, which is talking about positivity. And I hope everyone can see or listen and hear just how positive you are throughout even in your answer but it's interesting because I was reading this thing on Oprah's daily I think it's a publication that's online but it was titled how to be more positive and it had a subheading of how it's really possible to change your thinking yes and one of the professionals in quoted in the piece Joe Eckler she's apparently an Austin-based therapist and author of a book called I Can't Fix You Because You're Not Broken, says, quote, the most helpful definition of being positive is having hope and confidence in one's ability to handle what's tough, Mm -hmm. along with remembering that nothing is all negative all the time, end quote. And I, I think that Okay, well, first of all, would you agree that that's what positivity is about? Yes, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. 
there is just so much in what she says. She says the most helpful definition of being positive is having hope and confidence in one's ability to handle what's tough. But if you had to talk about positivity and what it means to you, what would you say is positivity to you? I think positivity is being optimistic and also kind of embracing where you are in the moment and accepting things for what they are and just seeing the good in everything and having gratitude, of course, for sure. That's what I would think positivity is, but definitely optimism. Yeah. Yeah. Positivity. I think I love everything that you said, everything that she said, but I also think that there's this element of having just the, not only the confidence to handle what's tough, but I think this appreciation for and the acknowledgement of one's self and how we're, I find that so many people are just willing to move forward and live this thing called life. And so I, I wish that there was this element in positivity where it's more about us just acknowledging the fact that we are such hard, like hard workers, if that's what defines you that we are doing such a great job already, but I don't know. Do you think that we celebrate ourselves enough each day? I feel like we don't. I feel like we deserve more celebration. We need to celebrate ourselves more because every day is a blessing, but I feel like we don't really take the time to think about it in that way and congratulate ourselves on the small things that we've done because we're always kind of looking forward well, I, most of us, I feel like are always looking forward and it's like, okay, I've got this done, but now let me get this done. So it's kind of like, we need to celebrate the small little steps that we're taking towards our bigger goals. And I feel like that's not really something that you think about doing when you just have this bigger goal um, in your mind. So yeah. I think that we can do a better job. Well, I definitely can for myself do a better job at celebrating the little steps because we work really hard every day to reach our goals. So I feel like just celebrating the little things is well-deserved. The last time I FaceTimed you, sis, you were, I think, just coming back from Starbucks and you had just gotten yourself some kind of cheese <clears throat> date or some kind of scone or something. But how often do you do those little things and how often do you celebrate yourself? Oh my gosh. Sissy, you're what exposing. was it? What do you get at Sissy, you're exposing me. <laughs> what is your Starbucks order? Uh, I have two orders, my like go-to orders. Sunday, soy caramel macchiato, extra caramel drizzle, extra hot. Or I get a grande chai tea latte, extra hot, soy milk, no water, seven pumps chai. I love that. Like Those I have my two go-to orders. <laughs> the fact that you nailed those just... It means, again, just shows that how, how much you love it. And I love how much you love it. No, because the thing is, I'm taking a break. I've been celebrating myself in that way too much, actually, going to Starbucks. <laughs> so now okay. I need to make it more of a like, like, you know, you really deserve this because I've been going every day. Okay. But so, okay. So talk to me about that. Talk to me about how you've been celebrating what, what it, kicks off this feeling inside Sabrina that says, okay, I, I need to go and treat myself. I think my celebration is more so like going out to eat with friends because I feel like with what I do, like I have a strict diet. So like having a, like a little cheat day with friends is kind of like, you know what? I deserve this. Like if it's once a week or so, you know, just something that just strays from the norm I guess from what I'm doing yeah because every day is grind 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 eat this eat that exercise or stretch or go to PT so it does get a little overwhelming sometimes and like sometimes you're just craving a burger and so okay you bring up such a great point and my next question is first of all can you tell us a little bit about the life of a runner and just exactly for us to get a picture as to how much of a physical and mental toll it takes on your body to be a runner, a professional runner. And then from there, I'd love to ask and get your opinion on what you do when you notice that you're maybe getting a little too, when you're working too much and you're overwhelmed and how do you get yourself out of that? 
Yes. So we train about six days a week. And on some of those days, we have doubles. Um, so that means we train in the evening too. And in the mornings, we'll have like two sessions as well. So that's like, we'll do our workout and then we'll have lift. And then later on in the day, I'll have either a run or a cross train session. And on the other days, like if I'm not running in the evening, I probably have PT or like massage. So it is like kind of a 24 seven job because you have to be on top of your nutrition and massage and needling. And if you have to get, uh, if you need to go see the chiropractor or something like that. So this job is like 24 seven because recovery is like everything. It's not just going to the workout and coming home and just partying, you know, not sleeping. So recovery is super important. And it does get overwhelming because my body is constantly in an extreme state, overwhelming feelings. So it's important to just not be so hard on yourself at times. And when I'm not working out, like in the recovery phase, kind of choosing to be, choosing to exist in like a state of peace. Wait, that's really interesting so you're kind of you're you're kind of choosing already to put yourself in this moment of peace and a mo- to give yourself a bit of grace yes what's an example of that every day that you do to kind of give yourself grace sometimes like if I have a couple of hours in between I'm gonna take a nap <laughs> like that's me choosing yeah. to exist in peace I'm gonna take a nap or I'm gonna like try to get as many episodes of a show in on Netflix, Starbucks. Yes, that is me choosing peace, (laughs) getting my latte. Just little things that I can just kind of bring my body back down, bring my mind back down from being overwhelmed. You're training at like max capacity. So anything you could do to relax, whether it's like reading a book or just going for a little walk, just anything to bring down the stress of the day I mean you're the runner I'm jogger slash crawler but you know that I also injured my Achilles and I know that you injured your Achilles a couple years ago and I can't imagine just how much stress that had on you throughout your life when you were in such really negative moments I feel as if I've never seen you negative though like I've never even though you told me that you went through those injuries you were still so happy and so positive so It would be so helpful for me just to know more about what anchors other people to not be so negative in those moments. I'm so curious to know what got you through that time and how you dealt with just such a stressful thing. There were definitely some dark times during the injury process. I think the number one thing for when you're going through like a hard time is having a good support system for sure. Whoever you're surrounding yourself around. Um, will definitely impact your mood and how you are treating yourself. So yeah, I think a, like having a strong support system is super important, like all the time, whether you're you're doing okay or whether you're not. Okay, my just a couple last questions, I promise. It's just <laughs> kind of around, I guess, when you get up, what are some thoughts that help motivate you to get out of bed? Well, definitely. I know I want to grind and make that Olympic team, but (laughs) I think just being excited about life, like I feel happy. I have my teammates who are also my friends. Like that's kind of like a motivation for me to go to practice. Like I get to go hang out with my friends and like, okay, we're going to be dying around the track a couple of times, but just like embracing this journey. I don't know, just feeling like it's a new opportunity to just get better and feel better about myself and grow as a person and as an athlete. So I also feel like manifestation is kind of becoming my thing. So just manifesting what I want. Yeah. I'm kind of getting into manifestation. Oh my goodness. So she kind of, yeah. Similar to what you said before about like choosing to be, I love how I think the last time I saw anything about manifestation, it was the Travis Kelsey manifesting his relationship with Taylor Swift. And I'm like, Honestly, that's so, tr- we should, we should all kind of manifest things more. Yeah, I, I, I think it's manifestation. I'm somewhere between manifestation and delusion, but let's just call it manifestation. <laughs> Wait, oh my gosh, no, we're manifesting. <laughs> Sabrina is going to the Olympics and then yeah. Starbucks. Starbucks. 
Thanks. How are you not sponsored by Starbucks? No, I'm wasting all my money here. <laughs> Tell me you have their Starbucks reward system. Yes, I do. Of course. Okay. <laughs> Given how much you're spending at Chick-fil-A and Starbucks, what are, what are you manifesting, sis? Like, what are you trying to manifest? I'm just manifesting more happiness and growth within myself, more confidence. Definitely Olympic team. That's number one. But yeah, I just want to grow as an athlete and as a person. And I just want to kind of have a bigger influence on people, a positive one. Exploring the world, I'm manifesting that. Okay, kind of as you as you continue to tell us what you're manifesting, my last question was around... Your positivity comes from you, but also I'm sure it's inspired by so many other people, your parents, I'm pretty sure your sister, just other people like Jimmy that we know and we love, and he's super optimistic. Where would you say that your positivity came from? And were you always just this really positive little Sabrina Sutherland (laughs) or Uh, over the years, where do you think that all kind of came from? Well... I feel like I've always been like happy. (laughs) Well, not always, but (laughs) I think I've always been like optimistic for sure. I know like if things aren't going my way, I'm like, okay, like this sucks, but I know something good is going to come out of this or like, this is just a little setback. I'm going to, I'm going to be on top soon. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. But I'm also a Sagittarius. So optimism, Sagittarius and optimism. Oh, uh, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. I think I think it's a thing. If astrology is real, I don't know. Yeah. But yes. But yeah, I really do think I feed off the energy of the people around me and I feel like I surround myself with people who are also just um forward thinkers and also feel like I get a lot of positive energy when I see people doing well for themselves. It kind of motivates me to push harder. Just you know what? I could take myself to the next level. I just need to yeah. push harder. But just, yeah, seeing people do well and just being around that kind of energy kind of pushes me forward. Yeah. Thanks so much for just, of course, this amazing conversation. Honestly, where can we all watch your next performance? I mean, where can we help you in terms of support both remotely? How can we all support you? What's the next event that you need us to watch and what's next for you? What's next? So I haven't come out with my outdoor schedule yet, but I will put it on my Instagram once I do. I What's know your Instagram handle? My Instagram is Sabrina Gem, Sabrina J-E-M. And yeah, I'll be racing at Penn Relays. That's probably like the biggest one in the upcoming month, next month, actually in April. That's probably the biggest one in April, Penn Relays. And I'll probably post about it on there when it's time so and then olympic trials is like the biggest thing in june so okay well i'm sending you all the good juju and i just am so grateful to you again i wish that my hope for this podcast and inviting guests like yourself is just so that more of the world can see and hear from people like you but also for us to be able to think about just our own positivity so Thanks, sis. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Love you, sissy. Hearts. Thank you for listening to Staying Positive with Paula. If you'd like to help, please subscribe on Spotify and you'll always know when the latest episode drops.